Okay, aloha everyone, and welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Juan. Today on the, our show, we have two guests, Shannon Tanganon from uh, Hawaii Electric and Benson and Medina from Sustainability Partners. So first of all, uh, I'm gonna go to you, Shannon, and uh, let's tell, me, tell our audience about the moratorium on disconnecting for non-payments. I think uh, you guys have some news on that, correct? Yes, the moratorium is ending on May 31st. But I think the main message that Hawaiian Electric wants to send is that come um, June 1st, it's not going to be, you know, thousands of disconnections. We just want to make sure that our customers know that we want them to stay connected. So the what we want them to do in the meantime is to set up payment plans so that um, you know, when you're on a payment plan, you're not subject to disconnection. If you stay on the payment plan and keep current with the payment plan, you're not subject to any kind of collection activity. So that's what we want to make sure customers know. Okay, and how can they set up a payment plan? To submit a request, uh, go to hawaiianelectric.com slash payment arrangement. Um, if you need assistance, financial assistance, we have um, links to programs that are available. We don't administer the programs, but there are many out there um, that uh, folks are able to utilize. And if you want to look at what's available, go to hawaiianelectric.com slash COVID-19. So there's a bunch of resources on that web page, um, you know, for folks who, you know, just might need a little help with uh, utility payment. So we just want to make sure people know that resources are available still. So just a quick, uh, I'm just a question because I don't know. Are there any um, other uh, vehicles for people that are really hurting uh, to be able to get money? Are there loans available or, or is there help from other agencies that can help, uh, help them pay their bills? Yeah, there are various uh, programs out there. Um, for those who qualify, um, there's LIHEAP. Um, LIHEAP uh, applications are taken from June 1st through, I believe, the end of, like, all through June. So that is available to those with uh, you know, have a certain level of income. Um, there's a lot with um, like the county program. They have rent and utility assistance available right now. Um, with Honolulu, uh, City and County of Honolulu, I believe their application process will open again, um, I believe June 7th. So they take a certain number of applications, close the program, and then allow for their uh, administrators to go through the applications and, and make the awards and then they open it up again. So I believe it's once every month um, that they open it up. So is uh, Hawaiian Electric gonna have information on the website for people to yeah, we, the organization? Sorry. Yeah, we definitely have those links available um, on, the web, on the web page. And then we also wanna let folks know um, for those who don't contact Hawaiian Electric to get on a payment plan, um, you know, have a past due balance, and that we've not been able to contact you. Um, what what happens is we'll put those folks on a automatic twelve month payment plan so that they avoid disconnection. So starting in July, those who qualify or meet the threshold for disconnection. We haven't contacted us. We're going to put you on an automatic 12 month payment plan. And that's just to like a stopgap to make sure that you don't get disconnected. Right. That's sort of like a fail safe. We just encourage folks though, there are programs available that go longer than the 12 months. So if you want to take advantage of that, I you know highly encourage you to go to the website. We have applications and flyers available in eight different languages. Um, so we just want to make sure folks know that there's, you know, 18 month program, 18 month plan, um, 12 months, 
four months if you need only four months. It, it varies. But we're going to work with our customers. Yeah, that's great. So is there anything else that uh, you want to say at this time, or is that pretty well the message? That's the message. We just want to make sure everyone stays connected. So we're doing all we can to make sure folks know that there's help available and payment plans available. Thank you very much for having us today. Hey, thanks for appearing, uh, Shannon. This is great information for our audience. Thank you so much and aloha. And now it's my uh, pleasure to, uh, to welcome uh, Benson Medina from Sustainability Partners. Aloha, Benson. Hey, how's it going, Mitch? Thanks for having me today. Hey, it's great having you. Uh, you're coming to us all the way from Hilo, I understand, through the magic of the electrons. Um, Benson, just introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, what's your background? Where are you from? How did you get involved with Sustainability Partners? Okay. You know, the uh, the, the one-minute elevator pitch. Okay, great. Uh, um, so I, I was born in Oahu, went to uh, uh, Kamehameha schools, was uh, uh, educated on the mainland in uh, Oregon, uh, came back and had a very uh, varied career that went through airline, uh, manufacturing, uh, electrical maintenance, um, started in with um, sustainability partners about five years ago uh, when they brought this concept to uh, Hawaii. Uh, so it's taken us really about five years to, to sort of spread that message and um, explain how our program works. And, and um, luckily we've been able to take a foothold now. Um, I live in Hilo. Uh, my wife's retired now from the National Park, uh, but we got a lot of kids and grandkids, so we're busy. That's great. You don't look old enough to have any grandkids. Well, I, got, I got great kids, great grandkids. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, yeah. really. You're They're right behind this door. I'll, I'll let, yeah. them, let them in here in a minute. So, uh, so what's the problem? What, what, what's the problem that we're uh, uh, sustainability partners mm. is trying to solve? Well, basically, uh, you know, every municipality, our our markets are really, um, you know, municipalities, universities, schools, and hospitals, and um, it, it's basically infrastructure. Like uh, in the state of Hawaii, uh, most of our infrastructure was put in uh, between seventy five and fifty years ago, uh, post World War II. Um, and, and before that, when Hawaii became a territory, we started putting in, um, you know, phone, phone lines, uh, water lines, all that kind of stuff, bridges. Uh, but no, um, no concessions were made at, at that time uh, to replace those when they reached the end of their service life. And a lot of them are way past their service life. They're, they're double their service life. We have, you know, we have, uh, w- you know, water pipes in there that are 100 years old. So uh, that's a big problem. And we don't even know where they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, the, the problem is that they need to be replaced. And then the bigger problem, of course, that it's a very, very expensive solution to do that. Uh, so um, Hawaii's infrastructure, uh, basically, when you, you, you know, there, there was an independent study done by civil engineers, the Civil Engineer Association. And um, Hawaii came out, you know, when you look at uh, airports, coastlines, you can see in that graphic there are uh, wastewater facilities, solid waste. Um, our our grade came out to D plus, and it came out to D plus simply because the the state of repair that they're in, uh, at the state of uh, the amount of deferred maintenance is going to get them uh, up to up to speed in terms of uh, being being um, uh, well functional. Um, <clears throat> we're we're way behind, and you know the um, the Hawaii Executives Association put out uh, a report about two years ago that said. Uh, to resolve Hawaii's infrastructure problem, it's about an eighty-eight billion dollar problem. Well, it's gone up considerably since then. So, you know, I I sort of just kind of estimated out uh, to be about a hundred million dollar, a hundred billion dollar issue. Man, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Well, so, tell us a little bit more about deferred infrastructure. Um, I mean, what does it? I mean, deferred maintenance. What what does it actually mean? And and what's, you know. Get into a few more of the details of why this is not a good thing to do. Well, deferred maintenance basically is exactly what it it sounds like. You know, it's like you, uh, you know, you're supposed to change the oil in your car, but you said I'll put it on to the next five thousand miles, and the next five thousand miles, the next five thousand miles. I mean, we've gone into one uh, agency of our state uh, that told us that they had five hundred million, a half a billion dollars worth of deferred maintenance. And, and, you know, they're, they won't solve that because there's no $500 million solution 
that's going to basically show up and, and resolve all of that. So all of the, the roof fixes and the water leaks and the pipes that need to be replaced and the light bulbs that could be put in that will uh, make it more energy efficient. Those are just maintenance projects. They get deferred because they simply don't have the budget to do it. So they get kicked down the road, so to speak. And so it's the next year and the next year and the next year. And so uh, that is a problem that unless um, you know some, uh, some type of uh, uh, outside entity can come in to help that problem, um, it's just something that you know it's going to be very very difficult to solve. And I understand there's not even enough money in the, mm -hmm. fed, the feds to uh, to address this problem. Well, I mean, I think it's great. You know, President Biden's uh, putting through uh, infrastructure uh, bill. You know, a couple of trillion dollars. Um, when it filters down, actually, to Hawaii, to what Hawaii will probably get, we'll probably get uh, maybe seven. Uh, eight billion dollars, and that's a lot of money. And it's gonna it's gonna solve a lot of problems. It's gonna fix some bridges. It's gonna take care of some problems that we have. But if our problem is a hundred billion, and we get seven or eight billion, then that means you know we we still have over ninety percent of the problems still left to solve. So here's the hundred billion dollar question: What's the solution? Well, there's the solution in, in our mind. Uh, so our company, Sustainability Partners, is a, is a capital placement company. So we're not a car company or a water company. Uh, we're basically a company uh, that takes funds and invests them into infrastructure projects. And our, basically our market is what we call the MUSH market, M-U-S-H. It's municipalities, universities, uh, schools, and hospitals. And what we do basically is we take... Um, you know, we we take a, a capital expense, like if you're going to uh, build a new building, and we turn that into an operating expense by by basically um, converting it down to a user fee, where where we would basically buy the assets. So let's just take a, a, a brand new electric bus. Okay, so a 40 foot electric uh, bus now costs you about a million dollars. So what we would do is we would buy that bus with our funds. Okay, we'd own the bus. We would pay for all the infrastructure, the electrical charging infrastructure it would take to operate that bus and all the associated costs like, like Hawaii County wants uh, Wi-Fi on their buses. So we would put all of that together. So we take all of that cost and we it, it's, it's basically a simple math and we divide it over the service life of the uh, asset. And in this case, the bus, it's 12 years or 500,000 miles. And, we, the, and then we just divide it uh, uh, Per mile, and we just give you a per mile charge. So uh, let's just say I don't know, it's a buck fifty. So the you know bus goes a thousand miles a month or something, and you pay us you know a thousand miles times a buck fifty. So it's a very simple process because one, it saves a ton of money because the, the county or the state doesn't have to put out a million dollars for the bus. Um, we take care of the maintenance because it's our asset, uh, and then it gets reduced down to just a, a user fee. So you only pay for or for what you use. I know that's kind of a commercial cliche, but that's basically how it works. So talk a little bit more about maintaining the buses. We'll use the bus example. <laughs> yeah. And also um, best available technology. We talked about that before we started the show. Right. So the maintenance, the maintenance of, of, of buses, well, well, let's kind of stay on buses. It's, it's super, super expensive. And, um, you know, there are some in some of the counties, there are buses that are there uh, that are basically just dead. Uh, because the county doesn't have the money to to fix them, to get the parts to fix them, or to pay the mechanics to to repair them, so it's actually cheaper because most of um, the buses are purchased with uh, FDA or Federal uh, Transportation Administration funds. They actually, it's easier to just buy another bus and just leave that dead bus out there. Uh, but in our system, because we only get paid if the bus is rolling, that would never happen because as soon as something happened to the bus. We would want to get in there, either replace it, fix it, get it rolling, because um, we we only get paid if the asset is working. So um, so yeah. So in, in terms of deferred maintenance, that gets taken completely out of the equation, uh, which is which is a great thing. So would you buy? You know, so you're going out to bid. You're going to buy the buses. Would you uh, buy the cheapest bus, or is there are there other? Um, mm -hmm. Uh, evaluation criteria that come into your selection yeah. of the bus. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for that softball. It's, it's terrific. So, so typically in the state's procurement uh, process, right, it's always the, the lowest bidder. Now, inherently, there's some problems with the lowest bidder, right? So, um, but, but in our case, since we've already, we've gone through state procurement, we've already won the procurement for electrification of transportation, um, that we're, we're going to try to basically get the asset that's going to last the longest. Uh, for, for example, we just uh, delivered uh, 44 cars to the Department of uh, Transportation, the Highways Division. And when we put out all the choices that we had, because we can buy in any one of them, um, it actually worked out that Tesla model wise were back basically the best bang for the buck because of the longevity, uh, the, the, uh, the low maintenance of it, uh, the warranty of it. Um, it. It made more sense for us to, to buy that than, than a less expensive model. So, uh, so in our model, it's, it's completely reversed. We're going to buy the asset that has the most uh, longevity, uh, the best quality, uh, as opposed to just the cheapest one. I remember the reaction when you rolled yeah. out the Teslas. Yeah. People were like on you saying, what are you doing buying the Tesla? I mean, that's the most expensive car, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was crazy. And, um, you know, I got to hand it uh, to uh, Ed Sniffen, you know, Deputy Director of Transportation for the Highways Division, because uh, uh, it was his department that cut those cars. And so he's uh, immediately called on the carpet. But but they had done their homework when they just put the graph up there and it showed all the different models, uh, the initial cost, the charging infrastructure installation of it, uh, the, the warranty, um, the, the amount of maintenance we were going to put in over the service life of the car. It, it actually wasn't even close. So, um, but we have to tell that story. We have to explain it because people don't like the optics of that. The state workers driving around a Tesla Model Y. So let's talk a little bit about the maintenance. It's great to have the bright, shiny object, but you still have to keep it maintained. So um, we have a lot of uh, people that are already maintain buses and, and do that kind of stuff. So how do you do the maintenance? And, and, and what, what's the service you provide there? Well, you know, it comes, you know, basically we depend a lot on the, on the manufacturer comes in. Uh, basically, we we do training, especially if it's going to be a new item like an electric uh, like an electric bus. Obviously, people need to be uh, retrained to um, to service those. Uh, the servicing, of course, is a lot uh, less complicated uh, because you know you go down just in a vehicle, you go down from you know twenty five hundred moving parts to less than twenty. So uh, you know a lot of the maintenance is uh, has uh, has been contained because of that. Um, but you know we're we're emerging into a new industry, so uh, people are beginning to see, especially uh, people that uh, service regular internal combustion engines, are are starting to see the tide turn. And and I tell you, the game changer, the game changer, Mitch, is the Ford F one fifty. So the, uh, as you know, the Ford F one fifty is the largest selling vehicle in the history of the planet. So when they um, put out an electric version of that, that the Lightning. And once that starts to catch on and people start buying that, uh, that's probably the easiest way to transform uh, people who are just driving reg regular internal combustion engines into electric vehicles. So, uh, so circling back to the, the maintenance of it, yeah, we're we're in char charge of the maintenance of that. Um, <clears throat> we're um, going to try to bring the best people in to maintain our asset because, like I said before, um, asset doesn't go; uh, we don't get paid. So uh, talking about keeping the wheels moving, so uh, talking to Riley Sato, I understand that because you own the vehicles, that if they're not being statistically, I understand like vehicles in a government fleet may only be used like 33% or you know a third of the time because of holidays, vacation, work hours, and all that. Um, talk to me about, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, capitalization or using that capital uh, for better effect by essentially, I understand it, renting out the vehicles to other people who might have a use for it. Yeah, we're, we're working through that and trying to figure out a ways in which to do that. We may um, uh, deploy these cars uh, through uh, some kind of agency like uh, Enterprise, for example, that, that, that rents cars out because um, we're, we're not in the rental car business. We want, we want our asset to, uh, uh, to be used uh, to keep rolling. Um, 
and then, you know, it is our hope actually uh, at the end of the service life of these uh, electric vehicles that we're working with now, uh, that we can filtrate them out into the community. Because part of what we'd like to do is bring community awareness to um, the electrification of transportation. And so the more that we can get these assets out there uh, to be used um, and then to uh, infiltrate them into the community, uh, you know, the better for us, the better for the community, better for the county, you know, better for everybody. So you're not going to run these vehicles into the ground like they tend to do now uh, <laughs> to the last uh, gas. You're going to keep modern vehicles, <laughs> the technology updated all the time because it, it affects yeah. your bottom line. Yeah, and that's prob- that's actually one of the one of the great things about uh, about using Tesla cars is that um, it's basically a computer that's on wheels, right? So the company is co- uh, it's constantly just kind of like your iPhone, right? They're, they're sending updates to the car all the time. So their so- software is uh, continually being updated. Uh, so, that, so that's a great, great thing for them. So for, so for us, if there's a, like, a, like a new, a better technology, I mean, we're fine taking something out that's supposed to last 10 years. We're taking it out after five years and replacing it with a, with a better technology. It's actually better for us to do that. Yeah, so for example, you can buy off, uh, you know, uh, use Mirai's now for like about $10,000 on the mainland. And you know, that's a $50,000, $60,000 car. Yeah. And say it, it introduces, you know, gets that technology uh, flowing through the economy. So that, yeah. and that's a good thing. Yeah. And yes. Very market. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to the next slide because you, you, you have a lot of uh, eligible infrastructures yeah. which happen. The title of the slide. Yeah, up. yeah. So, so I'll just kind of roll through that real, real quick. Um, so sustainability partners, we have a contract to do electrification of transportation, but but our job is to do any kind of infrastructure, whether it's you know wastewater facility, broadband expansion, uh, you know uh, redoing um, uh, lighting, uh, all of all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know uh, uh, boilers, uh, microgrids, all kinds of stuff. So uh, so not we're not. Um, uh, just restricted to doing to doing transportation, and our our sweet spot actually is water and uh, and wastewater facilities. So you know we're hoping uh, now that we'll be able to make an impact there. Um, especially now, all, all of the wastewater facilities in the state will have to um, upgrade their um, their processing now wastewater. Um, you know because of the uh, Hawaii Wildlife versus Maui County. Um, yeah, that that verdict came down from the Supreme Court last year, uh, and that's going to have a huge impact. What about the university? I mean, you know, I'm employed by University of Hawaii. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's an enormous yeah. backlog, yeah. Yeah. my understanding, and no money yeah. now, especially after this last yeah. legislature. Thank you very much, legislature, for <laughs> whacking $42 million out of our budget. That's really yeah. great. Yeah. Well, okay. we're, we're excited. Yeah, no. we're excited to uh, to start working with the university wide system. So the the two uh, uh, departments that stepped up right away uh, was the uh, uh, Department of Public Safety. So we're going to be uh, replacing um, some of their police cars uh, on campus with uh, with Tesla Model Ys. Um, one of the community colleges uh, reached out to us when we're community college on Oahu, and so we're going to be replacing some of their vehicles. So what we're trying to do right now is is basically um, get a meeting with um, uh, the fleet services division where they can just basically invite everybody uh, and we can kind of explain the program and then uh, people can have the opportunity to participate if they want to. We're, we're doing that uh, actually tomorrow with, uh, with the DLNR. Uh, all of their departments are coming to one uh, great big meeting where we're going to um, basically explain the program and explain how they can participate. But yeah, University of Hawaii, yeah, we'd love, love to have those guys. Awesome. So, where do you get all the money for this? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a pretty common question. Well, you know, the, there are uh, basically what are called global infrastructure funds, and the the guys who uh, run our company um, they they came out of that uh, that world, and and basically, you know, it's it's pension stuff uh, where where investors are looking really for um, a smaller investment over a long period of time. So we're you know. Investors want, uh, you know, the most money, double your money in a year. Uh, these type of investors will say, "No, nah, we'll make we'll make a few percent over fifty years." So uh, that there's an enormous, enormous amount of money 
uh, quadrillions of dollars that are out there to use for global infrastructure work. So what they're looking for is a long-term <laughs> recurring revenue contract yeah. with a guaranteed return safe. on investment. Something safe. And that's why our, our market is basically it's municipalities, it's governments, right? Municipalities, universities, right. schools, hospitals. Great. So um, that's getting us pretty close to the end here. So let's uh, let's kind of start wrapping up. Um, I understand. I just want to uh, one one last question on the transportation. Um, so uh, I understand that everything's wrapped into it. So of course I'm interested in hydrogen. I understand that you right. you'll, you'll take care of the uh, supply of, in my case, of fuel. Is that, uh, how is that gonna work? So, so basically what our contract is with the, the state and the, uh, the state highways division basically put out an RFP at the end of 2019. And they, uh, they, they did a kind of a, a, a different type of procurement where they basically just put out an objective uh, or a series of objectives that they wanted to achieve. Uh, we bid on those, we were awarded the contract and it was basically for electrification of transportation. <clears throat> so um, what, that, what that means is that um, what our contract um, enables us to do is to provide that for every state agency and every one of the counties. Now, um, our, our program, although it's, uh, you know, it sounds pretty simple, it's simple to me because I've been saying this for five years now, uh, yeah. but, but we have to repeat it to people. You know, it's simple and we just walk them through. It's an easy step. Uh, so people, you know, um, uh, hydrogen, right? So let's go to the uh, hydrogen fuel cells, right? So a hydrogen fuel cell can uh, power an electric bus or an electric car. Uh, we're all over it. So, um, you know, we're looking at technologies. So anything in our contract, it's basically anything that has anything to do with, uh, with the electrification of transportation, including like setting up microgrids for charging, like, like in Hawaii County's case, um, they park uh, their buses overnight in places that don't have any electricity. So that would be a, a great opportunity for us to put, uh, to put a solar microgrid in there, um, you know, that can help uh, charge these buses uh, overnight. So, yeah, so we're looking forward to it. So, you know, essentially this allows Hawaii to really mm -hmm. modernize all its infrastructure, all its transportation and really get with it. Uh, whereas, you know, the, uh, the current way of doing it is just not working, like you said. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, in rebuilding infrastructure, it's not, I mean, we're, we're coming in and we're uh, answering a big piece of the puzzle, but, but there's really, really three big pieces, Mitch. So uh, first, I mean, we, we have to have leadership that's willing to take some uh, action in it, right? So, so the, our mayor, the governors, you know, Governor Ige did a big, big thing by just saying, hey, Everybody on renewable energy by 20, uh, 2035. The legislature puts through a bunch of bills. Um, if House Bill uh, 552 passes, uh, then it'll, it'll dictate that, um, that all uh, state agency fleets have to be uh, fully, fully electric by, uh, by 2035. So, so the, the legislators, they're, they're all coming, they're, they're trying to help in this. And I think that the, the tide is really uh, turning now. So, so leadership is one thing. The second, are companies like us that are willing to come in and make the big investment uh, to put to put uh, millions and not just millions but tens of millions, even billions of dollars um, in here to help solve some of these infrastructure issues. And then the third thing is just is that we have to build some resiliency by by basically adopting the best technology that can help us, the best practices that are out there. Um, you know, people people begin to see that um, hey man, we're we're on an island. We have to be more sustainable. And so that's kind of where we're at. Sustainability partners is to work, work towards sustainability with as many people as we can partner with. One, one last question, quick one. Okay, okay. We're, we're almost out of time. <clears throat> what about federal uh, agencies? Are they, uh, do they qualify? Can you work with a federal agency? like? Um, yeah, we can work with a federal agency if we have a, if we have a contract uh, with them. Uh, right now, uh, the only contracts we have in the state of Hawaii, our, our state and uh, our state and county. But yeah, we'd love to work on, yeah, tell Pete Buttigieg to give me a call, I'll hook him up. <laughs>
Okay, well, look, thank yes. you so much, Benson. We're going to have to leave it there. We're out of time. I told yeah. you we're going fast. So uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Man, I really appreciate it. It's good to see you again. Thanks a lot. Uh, such a great program. So we'll leave it there. You've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we've been discussing sustainability partners, public-private partnerships with Benson Medina. Thank you very much. And thanks to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Mitch Yuan. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha.